Hi everybody, today we are going to talk about Fecal Streptococcus Isolation. First of all, what does a Fecal Streptococcus mean? A Fecal Streptococcus as we know, a fecus is uh, from the term itself, the strep this is from fecal origin. And what is a Streptococcus? Streptococcus is a microbe of course and from the term itself you can understand that it is a coccus. That is, coccus means it has been found to be what round in shape. And in the case of streptococcus, usually when cocci are being arranged in uh, chains, that is referred to as a streptococcus. So let's go to see what is the relevance of this fecal streptococcus and how do we as isolate it. There are different forms of indicator microorganisms we know that is. If you go to consider the indicator microorganisms, you have uh, total coliforms. Normally, we have the total coliforms. Then we have the fecal coliforms. We have the thermotolerant bacteria, the fecal streptococci, as well as E. coli. Okay, so these are the bacteria which are being used as indicator organisms. Now, if you go to consider the picture which has been given below, we can see that above the member of the enterobacteriaceae members comes under that the total coliforms and under that comes the fecal coliforms and within the fecal coliforms we have the E. coli and within the enterobacteriaceae member itself you have certain members called salmonella and shigella but we do not find fecal streptococci among this group but they are considered to be as indicator organisms. So, let's go and see what are indicator organisms first. Indicator organism is an organism which has been useful for all types of water and the organism should be present whenever the enteric pathogens are present. The organism should have a reasonable long survival time than the hardiest enteric pathogen and the organism should not grow in water. The testing method should be easy to perform. The density of the indicator organisms should have some direct relationship to the degree of fecal pollution and the organism should be a member of the intestinal microflora of warm blooded animals. So what do we indicate here? In the case of this, we are saying indicator, indicator. The term indicator means it should, uh, the criterion for indicator, that is, from the term itself it is clear, when a microbe is indicating something, that is that is the criteria that we use. Now, what are we indicating here? The indicators are those microorganisms, indicator microbes are those microorganisms which we normally use to indicate whether the, the water is being fecally contaminated. Now, it's not always possible to identify what all pathogens are being present in the water directly because each and every uh, specific organism will have a selective media and always it is not possible to identify directly choose. Now, sometimes if you are going to take a selective media of one particular organism and look whether that particular organism is there, it, uh, it will... It, uh, that might be detected, but it's not possible always to use uh, selective media for different organisms. So, in order to indicate whether there is a fecal contamination of the water, we use certain microbes as indicators. And those microbes are referred to as the indicator microbes. Now, we know that, as we mentioned earlier, all these, that is the total coliforms, fecal coliforms, thermotolerant bacteria, and fecal streptococci and E. coli are being found to be as indicator organisms. So let's go and see. They are all ind indicator organisms and uh, the other members have been included under Enterobacteriaceae family. But what is different of the fecal streptococci here? Fecal streptococci is usually found in the stomachs and intestines of humans and animals. And uh, they are also having a high uh, level of resistance against uh, uh, drastic environments as well as drastic treatment strategies that we use in water treatment and all that. And uh, fecal, they are also like the fecal coliforms, okay. 
uh, they are also used as indicators of water pollution. But these are mainly a group of gram-positive streptococci belonging to the genera of Indrococcusum streptococcus. So the thing is that to be noted is it is gram-positive. In Enterobacteriaceae family, which we had mentioned earlier, the coliforms and E. coli and all that, they are all been found to be as gram-negative. But in the case of fecal streptococci, they are being found to be gram-positive cells. And among this, you have two main genera, such as Enterococcus and Streptococcus. Now, how do you distinguish them? Streptococcus is a genera in which various cocci are being arranged together in chains. Whereas, in Enterococcus, usually, uh, the, you have cocci which are being arranged as diploid. That is, they arrange in pairs. So, both of them are of fecal origin, they are of cocci which have been arranged in chains and if it's a longer chain, uh, a long chain that is referred to as those, those bacteria include the streptococcus member and those which have been found in pairs, the cocci which have been found in pairs are referred to as enterococcus. But in sometimes what happens in certain places they might uh, uh, not in certain water treatment and all that, they might get uh, mistaken. That is, sometimes they might randomly say streptococcus and enterococcus together. Now, coming to the fecal. So, how are these different from the fecal coliforms? The fecal coliforms are those members which we include under enterobacteriaceae member family. And they are being found to be aerobic and facultatively anaerobic. And they are being found to be gram-negative. You know, what's the difference between gram-positive and gram-negative? That is, they will stain red or pink using saffron. They take up the stain of uh, the saffron and stain during the process of gram-staining. They are non-sporing. They are rod-shaped. Earlier in the case of uh, streptococcus, it was being found to be cocci shaped And here, the fecal coliforms, they are rod-shaped. And they produce gas upon lactose fermentation in the prescribed culture media within a period of 48 hours at 35 degrees centigrade. And they mainly include members of E. coli. Now, both of them, let it be fecal coliforms as well as streptococci, they are being used as indicator organisms. But most, most often, fecal streptococci have certain advantages over the coliform. And the fecal coliform bacteria as among the among the coliform as well as the fecal coliform bacteria, fecal streptococci has certain advantages. The thing is that they rarely multiply in water and they are more resistant to various environmental stress and chlorination than the coliforms. And they generally persist longer in the environment. So it indicates that after a water treatment or after a process of chlorination, or uh, any other water treatment strategy, what happens is, if there is a presence of fecal streptococci, it indicates that a fecal origin is there. Okay, so even you might not detect the coliforms sometimes, but the fecal streptococci, they can withstand all these things. And they, they persist longer. So it indicates that there is a fecal contamination even now. The treatment of that is not, uh, the treatment which we adopted for the water sequencing is not sufficient. So now let's go into the what are the different strategies or what are the specialities of these fecal streptococcus. Fecal streptococcus as we told they mainly include a group of gram positive Lansfield group D streptococci. Uh, streptococci that is based on the Lansfield type A. Okay. Basically, there are two different groups, that is the streptococcus group and the enterococcus group. And of the genus streptococcus, you have only streptococcus bovis and streptococcus equinus. They are being considered to be as the true fecal streptococci. Bovis is mainly the streptococcus which has been found in the cow and streptococcus equinus mainly in the horse. And uh, these are the two species of streptococci which are predominantly found in the animals. Now coming to enterococcus, they include all the streptococci that share certain biochemical properties and they have a wide range of tolerance 
for adverse growth conditions. And enterococcus are differentiated from other streptococci because of their ability to grow in 6.5% uh, of sodium chloride, a pH of 9.6 and even at 45 degrees centigrade. And here we have uh, different species such as enterococcus avium, enterococcus spesium, enterococcus durans, enterococcus faculus and an enterococcus gallinarium. And enterococcus fecalis and enterococcus spesium are more specific to the human blood. So uh, if I need to conclude the fecal streptococci are being found to be as gram positive indicators which have been found in the body not sorry in the water as well as the other E. coli and all that they are being found to be as gram negative gram negative cocci shaped indicator sorry gram negative rod shaped indicators in the case of streptococcus they are cocci shaped and in the case of E. coli they are being found to be rod shaped and they are being found to be gram negative so streptococcus uh, group or the fecal streptococcus as well as E. coli, they are of fecal origin. Their presence in the water will indicate that there is a fungal, uh, sorry, a fecal contamination. But one group has been found to be gram positive in nature and one group is gram negative in nature. And one group that we have here, that is the streptococcus group, they are being found to be cocaine shaped, either which is arranged in chains as in the case of streptococcus or they might be arranged as pairs or in diploid state uh, in the case of uh, enterococcus and in the case of uh, fecal coliforms in E. coli group the E. coli they have been found to be as gram negative rod shaped bacteria so I hope you are clear with this with this we end the first session of fecal coliforms and fecal streptococci based differentiation Thank you.